this competition between these two was much, much closer than Columbus was. What's up, guys, and welcome. You're watching Festive for this. You guys should definitely watch Tyler Mannion's breakdown of the Orange Classic UK. No wonder why the runner-up Samsung looks so happy to hear that detailed analysis. Because it was all positive feedback for Samsung Dalda through and through. And the judges' feedback, it just fills me with joy. It fills me with pride, you know, knowing how much we've improved, how much we keep improving. It just fires me up to get back to work and get back to training, knowing that what we're doing is working. You know, and honestly, it's a... Uh, it's a, uh, it's, it's amazing, man. It's amazing to know that, especially given where we came from just in less than a few years ago, to be here now, battling with the best of the best, and going strong at it. You can only imagine how tough it must have been, how tough the training has been, how tough it must have been mentally and physically to get to this stage. You know. Although Hadi Chopin did win that show with the final scores of six and two, meaning out of the eight mandatory poses. Hadi Chopin won 6, and Samson Dauda won 2. But despite this overwhelming lead by Hadi Chopin, there were still so many shots, like the front double biceps, like the side tricep, and the most muscular shot, that were really close between Hadi Chopin and Samson. Overall, pose by pose, it was 6-2 to two Hadi. Even though the score is 6-2, to two, this competition between these two was much, much closer than Columbus was. And I think you can see that. And if Samson continues to improve, which I'm sure he will, the Olympiad this year is going to be one hell of a show. And it's going to be one hell of a rematch. And again, it is going to be a really close battle between the top three. Now, realistically speaking, Samson Dauda is not beating either Hadi Chupan or Derek Lunsford or even Nick Falker in the back shots. But the thing is, he is so damn combative in all of the front shots. And not to mention his side shorts are crazy good. Especially with that level of detail that we saw from him at the Arnold UK. That he can make it really difficult for all of these other short guys. And I think when you see even the difference from Friday to Saturday with Samson, this pose is getting stronger and stronger for him. He can do the same thing. He can pull a vacuum. He can crunch down on the abs. This pose has improved a lot for him. I think it's going to be a strength standing next to a lot of other guys. And that is one of the biggest strengths Samson has. He is so big, he's so wide. He takes so much space on the stage. And with all that, he is very well put together. He has really nice flow. And after getting to see those results of coming down in size, and that helped him look not just much more detailed, but he was still holding on to all his size that he had at the Orange Classic Ohio. Or at least it looked that way. On Saturday night, I thought this pose was really a toss-up. I could see why people would like each guy in this pose. I think overall, Samson has a little bit better flow than Hadi in this pose, but still the conditioning and the separation of the muscles and how everything was popping, I just barely leaned towards Hadi. And seeing that this physique was appreciated by the judges a lot more, I think Samson Dauda will dig even deeper for the Olympia this year to achieve the level of conditioning that has never been seen on his physique before. And if he can make adjustments to this pose, this is a pose that I think he can end up flipping in the future. Now, will that be able to surpass the guys that have been beating him so far? Well, we cannot say at this point. But the thing is, this is his only chance. Samson isn't winning the Olympia based on his shape alone. I mean, his shape carried him really far. He is top three in the world. But to win the Olympia, you need everything. You need a combination of size, the conditioning, the fullness, the muscularity. You need everything. You see that Samson has definitely more fullness to the chest. You see his side leg is definitely bigger as well. And now when he's in this kind of condition that he was in on Saturday night, you can see the lines and the details in his legs. And we also saw how even a flat looking Samson Dauda doesn't lose a lot of pop on the stage. So bringing that next level of conditioning. That should be the aim for Samson Dauda. And I think that is the aim for Samson for this upcoming Mr. Olympia. And for me to hear this now and get this now, man, it just it secures that really, man. It secures that really in my heart. And it just gives me that, that drive and that hunger to keep pushing and keep going hard at it and keep training as hard as I can in the gym. So, yeah, man, for me, this is, uh, this is absolutely awesome. I mean, we went at it all through the prep. We pushed and pushed and pushed. Mel has been, I mean, hell, look at the job she's done. I mean, you can't, you can't, look, the, the evidence is right there in front of you. 
We have an update from Patrick Moore. The guy is now 40 years old. So if he wants to make a big splash in the men's open bodybuilding, this is the year to do so. Because from here onwards, it is gonna get harder and harder for Patrick to even hold on to the muscle that he has already packed on. Not to mention the level of competition has just skyrocketed since he made his Olympia debut that was back in 2019. So there is no doubt that Patrick had a great physique when he placed top 10 at the Olympia in 2019. And that was a major hint given to him by the judges that if he keeps on adding more size to all his criterias, he's gonna get rewarded. But Patrick just never took that bull step like Rafael Brandao did. He should have taken some time off. Maybe a year-long offseason would have helped. And he could have utilized that time to get bigger, to be more competitive for the men's open bodybuilding. And here is another factor. Size isn't the issue that he has been facing for the last couple of years. He has never been able to duplicate that kind of conditioning that we saw from him at his Olympia debut. He wasn't impressive at all in any of the shows that he did in 2023. The Arnold Classic and Chicago Pro. On top of that, the guys are now much more bigger. And they have equally classic structure and classic lines as Patrick. So coming back to his recent update, he looks really impressive in this one. And it looks like he has put on some size as well. But if we speak without any filters, he probably can win a show and he can qualify for the Olympia. But there is just zero chance of him getting in that top 10 again, considering the depth of the lineup now. Multiple guys will have difficulty in duplicating those same results that we saw from them at the Olympia 2023. Because there were just so many guys missing last year. And they are all coming back in 2024. Ors Kleshinsky took to his Instagram a few hours ago. Being very transparent about the stress of bodybuilding. Plus the stress of social media as well. And that has put his body under immense pressure. And that has affected him both physically and mentally as well. So Ors has been competing non-stop since 2021. He did not miss any on classic. So every year he has been doing longer and longer preps. And comparative bodybuilding is such an extreme sport that although he immensely improved his physique from 2021, that year he made his Olympia debut to this past Arnold Classic. But the pressure of performing at such a high level is just a lot. So Ors is gonna cut back on his YouTube videos, plus very limited content on his Instagram as well. And don't take it the wrong way. He isn't quitting on anything. He just wants to focus more on bodybuilding. He wants to bring his best ever to the Olympia this year because he wants his revenge. He wants to show it to the bodybuilding world that he still can be a Mr. Olympia title contender. So he is going to be focusing on bringing an even better package at the Olympia in October. But for now, he's going to take a break, which he really deserves. Urs is one of the top classic physique competitors, and he should be appreciated for this. Coming out publicly and admitting, the social media can take a toll on you mentally. So as far as his physique goes, the way he improved from Ohio to the Arnold UK in just two weeks' time, he should never be underestimated. We have another classic update for you guys up next. Stefan is now working with Patrick. And Patrick, we all know, has worked with some very big names of the industry. And he has brought these guys in an extreme level of conditioning. And also in the best shape of their lives. So off the top of my head, we have the 2-12 Mr. Olympia Keon Pearson. We have Michael the Bull, the most straight guy in the world. John De Rosa, who just finished top 4 at the Arnold. And these guys brought their all-time best looks under his coaching. And now Stefan is aiming to be the next athlete who is going to bring his absolute best with Patrick. So he is down 17 pounds since the prep started. And that, I have to say, is a lot of weight to drop in just three weeks. Yes, you guys heard that right. He dropped 17 pounds in just three weeks. But still, he looks so round and so full and so bubbly. But here's the thing with Stefan. We do not know how much of that he can retain. How much of that pop and fullness will he be able to carry onto that stage? How much of that look he can retain while he dives down to get shredded? By looking at the track record of Patrick, this might be the best version of Stefan that we are going to see. So the question is, can he be top 10 at the Olympia? There is definitely a possibility of that. Most of us do not even remember who placed behind Bessie Weezers last year at the Olympia who placed 7th. So Stefan can definitely sneak in there. So hit the thumbs up button if you liked the video. And smash the subscribe button if you want to come back for more. Thanks for watching.